low-grade warfare disruption. Low-grade warfare disruption is the lowest technical tier used by states or proxies during conflict. These operations flood or overwhelm outward-facing services to deny access and create confusion. The methods are simple. Orchestrated distributed denial of service across many endpoints, front-end defacements, and bulk credential abuse to lock or harass officials. Historically, entire national online services have been taken offline for days in response to political disputes or as a diversion during military moves. Real-world example. In 2007, Estonia faced a nationwide campaign of politically motivated DDoS attacks after a dispute over a Soviet-era monument. Government websites, banks and media outlets were knocked offline for nearly three weeks. The activity was highly visible, timed to political tensions, and intended to shake public trust in institutions. These attacks are intended to be visible. They announce intent, complicate civilian and governmental coordination, and test the opponent's incident response without crossing into destructive escalation. The operational pattern is quick bursts, timed to political events or military phases, routed through proxy botnets and third-party infrastructure to obscure origin. Effects are immediate. Public-facing portals and media become unreachable, emergency information flow degrades, and short-term trust in institutions erodes. Defenders facing this level must execute continuity playbooks, activate DDoS scrubbing and CDN failover, switch public messaging to alternate channels, preserve forensic logs for later attribution, and ensure command elements have secondary communication channels. Tactical trade-offs for attackers are low-cost and plausible deniability. Trade-offs for defenders are rapid restoration and resilience under public pressure. Targeted communication sabotage. Targeted communication sabotage focuses on degrading military command, control, and logistics communications rather than public-facing systems. These operations aim to blind or slow military units, disrupt supply flows, and introduce friction into battlefield decision loops. Execution requires reconnaissance to identify comms endpoints, routing infrastructure, and intermediary providers. Then targeted denial, selective packet manipulation, or temporary service outages time to operational windows. Real-world example. During the Russia-Ukraine conflict, cyber campaigns targeted Ukrainian telecom providers and logistics systems in tandem with kinetic operations. Outages in mobile and satellite communications disrupted command links, while banking back-end disruptions slowed supply chains. These well-timed strikes introduced delays and confusion at the tactical edge. Documented wartime examples show coordinated cyber strikes against a belligerent telecom and banking backends during periods of kinetic escalation, producing delayed orders, misrouted logistics, and impaired tactical coordination. The strategic purpose is to create operational asymmetry, a force that can maneuver while the adversary's communications are degraded. Indicators include simultaneous outage reports from frontline units, loss of encrypted channels for short intervals, and disrupted telemetry from logistics hubs. Defenders must provision hardened, redundant command and control pathways air-gapped or radio fallback systems, pre-shared emergency crypto, and pre-staged alternate routing. Rapid verification procedures and offline SOPs for commanders are essential to avoid paralysis. For attackers, the cost is higher than generic DDoS because precise timing and targeting increase exposure. For defenders, the required preparation is operational discipline and redundant comm architectures. Strategic espionage penetrations. Strategic espionage penetrations are long duration, stealthy intrusions by nation state actors designed to exfiltrate classified military data, industrial secrets, and policy intent. These operations establish persistent footholds in target networks, harvest program designs, troop movements, procurement plans, and diplomatic communications over months or years. Execution uses tailored spear phishing, custom remote access tools, covert command and control beacons, living off the land techniques, and careful data staging to avoid detection. Real world example. The SolarWinds compromise in 2020 exemplified this approach. Attackers implanted malicious code in a widely used IT management platform, granting months of covert access to US agencies and defense contractors. The breach quietly funneled sensitive information out while remaining undetected giving adversaries insight into government operations. Historic cases include multi-year intrusions into defense contractors and government agencies where attackers quietly collected program files and intellectual property that later accelerated adversary development. The military payoff is direct. Stolen designs shorten development cycles, reveal vulnerabilities, and provide targeting intelligence for kinetic or cyber strikes. Detection is subtle. Low-volume exfil transfers, 
scheduled outbound connections to unusual hosts, anomalous account activity during non-business hours, and evidence of lateral movement, defenders must apply persistent threat hunting, strict network segmentation, least privilege access models, and data loss prevention on sensitive enclaves. In wartime, rapid isolation of compromised enclaves, credential rotation, and prioritized evacuation of sensitive material become urgent. The attacker's calculus here prioritizes stealth over spectacle. The defender's calculus prioritizes early detection and containment to deny strategic advantage. Influence and information operations. The influence and information operations exploit cyber access to shape public perception, political decisions, and alliance cohesion. This level combines intrusions with deliberate disclosure, targeted leaks, and coordinated social media campaigns to amplify political effects. Execution blends theft of documents or communications with staged releases timed for maximum effect, automated dissemination via networks of accounts and tailored messaging to specific demographic or elite audiences. Real-world example. In 2016, coordinated Russian operations combined the theft and leak of political correspondence with wide-reaching social media campaigns. The timing of document releases and the amplification of divisive narratives across inauthentic networks altered public discourse influenced elections, and tested alliance cohesion. Documented wartime-aimed campaigns have included the harvesting and public release of political correspondence to influence elections, the timing of leaks to coincide with military moments, and coordinated narrative pushes across platforms to fracture domestic consensus. The result is strategic friction, public opinion shifts, policy responses are delayed or misdirected, and alliances are pressured by internal politics. Detection requires cross-domain analysis, correlation between leaked artifacts and social amplification patterns, identification of inauthentic accounts, coordinating narratives, and forensic linkage between exfiltration and subsequent disclosures. In warfare, the information domain is part of the operational picture. Control of narrative and the ability to sow doubt can be as decisive as battlefield gains. Critical infrastructure attacks. Critical infrastructure attacks target the foundational systems that sustain civilian life and military logistics, power grids, water systems, transportation networks, and aviation services. Operations at this level establish long-term access to industrial control systems and service provider platforms to hold essential services at risk or to execute time disruption during conflict. Real-world examples. In 2015 and 2016, Ukrainian power companies were hit with cyber intrusions that manipulated SCADA systems, causing regional blackouts and proving that adversaries could remotely disable energy distribution. In 2021, the Colonial Pipeline ransomware attack forced operators to halt fuel distribution, leading to widespread shortages across the U.S. East Coast. Attack methods include supply chain insertion, spear phishing of OT administrators, bridging air-gapped systems via removable media, and covert manipulation of PLC and SCUDA commands. Real-world results have included remote switching of power substations that produced mass blackouts, persistent backdoors inside energy networks that enabled later escalation, and incidents where aviation service provider compromises forced airports to revert to manual processing, causing widespread delays and cancellations. The strategic effect is direct pressure on civilian morale, economic continuity, and military logistics that depend on public infrastructure. Detecting these intrusions relies on deep visibility in OT telemetry, unexpected command sequences, anomalous control set points, and unexplained authentication events on control networks. Defenders must enforce strict OTIT separation, whitelist control applications, log and restrict removable media, maintain manual mechanical fail-safes, and rehearse offline recovery and manual control procedures. In wartime, operators must assume the presence of adversary footholds and operate with conservative defaults and manual overrides to preserve essential services. Destructive cyber operations. Destructive cyber operations use malware engineered to corrupt, erase, or physically damage systems rather than simply deny access. These are deliberate, high-impact acts that remove capabilities, destroy records, or sabotage equipment. Execution frequently combines targeted espionage to identify critical assets with custom destructive payloads that wipe disks, corrupt firmware, or manipulate control sequences to cause wear or failure. Real-world examples. The Shamoon malware attack of 2012 wiped more than 30,000 Saudi Aramco systems, crippling one of the world's largest energy firms. In 2017, NotPetya masqueraded as ransomware but acted as a wiper, 
destroying data across Ukrainian networks and inadvertently cascading into global companies, causing billions in damage, both demonstrated how cyber campaigns can cripple economies and governance. Notable instances include mass data wiping campaigns that rendered thousands of corporate and government systems inoperable and targeted destructive attacks on banks and state agencies that paralyzed financial and administrative functions. The purpose is strategic, force long recovery cycles, impose economic and administrative costs, and disrupt wartime governance. Detection prior to activation is difficult because attackers stage access and wait. Detection after activation is clear, but recovery becomes urgent and expensive. Defense demands immutable air-gapped backups, prioritized offline recovery playbooks, rapid isolation of affected networks, forensic readiness, and legal diplomatic preparations to manage escalation. In conflict, destructive cyber operations are escalatory by nature. Decision makers weigh the strategic benefit of crippling an opponent against the likelihood of reciprocal action or unintended civilian harm. Cyber physical weapons and autonomous campaigns are at the highest tier lie cyber physical weapons and autonomous campaigns that directly cause physical destruction or operate at machine scale with minimal human intervention. These operations are built with multiple zero-day vulnerabilities, tailored payloads for specific hardware, and orchestration that links cyber effects to kinetic outcomes. Real-world example, Stuxnet, discovered in 2010, was engineered to sabotage Iranian nuclear centrifuges by reprogramming industrial controllers while masking its activity from operators. It was the first public case of a cyber weapon designed for precise physical destruction setting a precedent for state-level cyber-kinetic operations. Exemplars include cyber weapons that reprogrammed industrial controllers to degrade or destroy machinery and self-propagating worms that spread through trusted update channels to inflict indiscriminate collateral damage beyond the intended target. The strategic aim is surgical physical effect combined with operational deniability or rapid, large-scale disruption that overwhelms response capabilities. This level also encompasses the emerging use of AI to automate reconnaissance, vulnerability discovery, and adaptive payload behavior, enabling faster, more persistent campaigns. Detection requires integrated cyber-physical monitoring, firmware integrity validation, and anomaly detection across industrial telemetry and enterprise networks. Defenders must harden firmware, enforce hardware attestation, coordinate vendor and allied intelligence sharing, and build cross-domain contingency plans linking cyber response with civil defense and kinetic options. The highest tier weapons carry the greatest political risk. Their use can reshape conflict boundaries, cause mass collateral damage, and accelerate proliferation of similar capabilities. To see how those options play out across the chain of command, check out our deep dive, every rank in the US Army explained in detail.